Hi there. My name is Purna Uduna. Some time ago on Twitter, I have asked from you guys on what video to do. So let's get on a plane and do it. I s sorry, I forgot my mask. Okay, let's go. Dear passengers, the flight to Jaffna will leave in a few minutes. Thank you and cheers. Oh, we have a lot of time for that. So without further ado... Okay, we arrived at our destination, so now there's only one thing left to do. Okay, let's now go back to our hotel, shall we? Shall we? Well, I'm back now. Okay, let's talk about Jaffna right now. So basically, Jaffna is located right over here in the northern part of Sri Lanka. And believe it or not, it is actually considered to be the capital city of Sri Lanka's northern province. This means the Northern Provincial Council is located here, headed by this lady who is named Pearson Charles. And Jaffna is also ruled by a mayor who is, well, this guy right here, Manivanan. And yeah, he looks chill in his office apparently. We have to talk about this party, the Tamil National Alliance or the TNA. This party is basically the party that is supposed to represent the Sri Lankan Tamil interest in the Sri Lankan parliament. Now, for some of the Canadian viewers, you might think that, well, this might be a little bit similar to the French Canadian Separatist Party, the Plomb Québécois, but it only cares about Quebec interests and it doesn't really care about the French Canadian interests in other parts of the country. But really, let's just be honest. Let's just get back to the video now. We have a lot of things to cover. We, we don't have time for this. So let's come on, come on now. Let's come on, get moving. Please get moving. Okay, so that means now we have all the time to learn about the country's, well, the city's history. So Cholas, well, Indians came to this part of the country, Jaffna. And then, you know, soldiers came in and for a while, well, Jaffna was under the Chola Empire. And actually... He, after some time, Jaffna formed its own kingdom and its headquarters were in a suburb in Jaffna. And you can still see the ruins of the palace that the king used, that the kings used to rule. And also this statue by King Sangili and one of the kings of Jaffna. And then after some period of time, in 1505, the Portuguese decided to come around. And you know what the Portuguese did back then? They destroyed a lot of stuff in the kingdom. Like, I mean, of course, the Portuguese established their own control in the Jaffna city as well. And they burned down Hindu temples like any European power who hates the Eastern religions would do. Then in 1658, the Dutch decided to do their own thing and decided to drive the Portuguese out. Jaffna, along with other coastal cities in the country, were also under Dutch rule. And then in 1796... Well, let's just say one thing, which is that the British did their own imperialist thing that they are pretty much only good at. Now, in 1833, the Cold Book reforms came into effect, which meant that Sri Lanka, or Ceylon, that was known at the time, would be divided into five provinces, and Jaffna was the capital at the time. There was also a time in which the Hindu revival movement was going on in the city of Jaffna, and some measures were proposed, like schools and Hindu books and renovating Hindu temples. This was uh, proposed by Sir Arumuga Navalar, who is a Jaffna native, and many people actually liked that idea. Many Hindus loved it. And then in 1948, well, let's just say Sri Lanka gained its independence. Sri Lanka, you have done such a great job now. Okay, now let's get into a bit of the more controversial aspects of Sri Lanka, of the city. Okay, <clears throat> are you ready for this? Okay, let's go. Alright, so basically in 1956, they introduced the Sinhala Only Act and of course being, and then from that point onwards, there were a lot of 
fires and a lot of riots that went on in Jaffna as well. In 1983, this thing, same thing happened in other parts of the country. But in Jaffna, well, I think you can uh, probably understand what the situation was like in Jaffna. And then a civil war raged on for 26 years. And then up until the year 2009 when they decided, you know what, let's just uh, end this all, whole thing. And yeah, we are back to where we are today. So, to be honest... To wrap this up, I feel like this country, well, this city actually has a vast history. So I guess we need to understand more about this city's history. So instead of doing this, why not as good Sri Lankans do this thing? It's not even that hard. In fact, it's good for this country's safety. Okay, let's get into the bit of the more fun stuff right now. You know, what is Jaffna like today? So Jaffna is a city that has a population of around 88,000 people as of the recent statistics and is actually not the largest city in the province, Vaunia is. And sorry Jaffna, I'm very sorry. If you want a quick uh, weather report, well here it is because I have absolutely no time. Now Jaffna speaks the Jaffna Tamil dialect uh, which and also most people are Hindu, ardent Hindus in the city. But also it is worth noting that there are sizable uh, Christian and also Muslim communities as well. And of course, back in the city, there's even a small Buddhist community, mostly Sing Tamils, but also some Sinhalese as well. Okay, now let's get into the bit of the more touchy part of this video. Now, when a Sinhalese goes to Jaffna, they might immediately feel that they are going to be alienated in this city. And there's a reason for that. Pretty much... The civil war that lasted in this country has created basically two nations within one island. Therefore, which meant that while the Sinhalese would feel like this in Jaffna, the Tamils who live in Jaffna, when they come to, say, a Sinhalese city, they will feel like this. And honestly, I may not be an expert in terms of ethnic reconciliation, honestly, I'm but from my perspective, from seeing all of this, the way that we can improve this country's uh, linguistic and, you know, overall unity is that we learn, is for the Sinhalese to learn Tamil, and also for the Tamils to learn Sinhalese, even though they mostly do that. Or if you can't do either, just learn English at least. I mean, after all, it is the link language of this country. Alright, now I guess we don't need to end off, we have to end off with a bit of a lighter note, which is everyone's favorite, food. Of course, you have to end it up with food, trust me. Okay, so to sum it up, Jaffna is known for its seafood industry and also its ice cream industry as well. And actually, the ice cream is pretty good, I must say. And here's proof, there's this place called... Rio ice cream, which is this shop right here, and Jaffna's Rio ice cream is definitely 100% the best. They don't sponsor me, by the way. Okay, now to sum it up, Jaffna may have to go through a lot of ethnic tensions between the two major communities of Sri Lanka, much to the appeasement of the Britishers who rule over the city. But over time, many people in Jaffna would realize that, you know what, this is all this is a little too old and yeah, this is a toko ice cream and just, you know, be friends again. So I suggest maybe taking a tour to Jaffna sometimes. Trust me, it is definitely worth the experience. That's all from me. I'm Poor Rodovana, sign signing out. Bye.